To start, you will remove the front wheel from the vehicle. Once the wheel is removed, you will uninstall the vehicle's tie rod from the shock. To start, you will need to remove the cotter pin by bending the end straight and pulling out. You will now be able to remove the tie rod nut that holds the tie rod end to the shock. Once the nut is removed, you can now pull the tie rod from the bracket. In some cases, especially with OEM suspension, this may take some persuasion as the tie rod end is typically wedged into the arm. You will now want to remove the speed sensor and brake line brackets from the side of the shock. Each will be held in by a bolt to the bracket. Your next step will be to remove the two bolts and nuts that hold the strut to the hub of the vehicle. Once these are removed, you will be able to slide the shock away from the hub. In the engine compartment, locate the three nuts holding the top mount and shock to the shock tower. Remove these three nuts and the strut assembly will be completely uninstalled from the vehicle and can be pulled out. With the use of spring compressors, secure the spring so that the top piston nut can be removed to disassemble the strut. With the OEM upper mount removed from the old suspension, you will reuse a few pieces from the coilover setup. The two main pieces that need to be reused will be the OEM upper bearing and OEM top mount. On top of the Raceland upper spring seat, you will replace the bearing and then the top mount. This will then get bolted down completely with the new supplied Raceland nut. It will be very important that this bearing is not only present but in proper working order to avoid any issues or noises that may result from misinstallation. The coilover assembly is now ready to be reinstalled on the vehicle. In the wheel well, align the top mount studs to their place in the strut tower. While holding the coilover in place, reinstall the three nuts holding the top mount to the vehicle shock tower and tighten them securely. The two lower mount bolts and nuts will be reinstalled next. Lift the hub into position onto the coilover's mounting bracket and slide each bolt through. Install the nuts and tighten. You will now mount the speed sensor and brake line brackets to the mount on the race line coilover using the factory bolts. The tie rod will now be installed onto the coilover's tie rod bracket. Now that the suspension angles and heights have been changed, it will become necessary to adjust the tie rod end to the appropriate length for the new strut. Slide the tie rod end into the bracket and reinstall the nut holding the tie rod to the bracket. Reinstall the cotter pin by sliding it through the hole in the threading and then bending the ends to ensure that it stays in place while driving.
The installation of this corner is now complete and you can install the front wheel. To begin the rear, remove the rim from the vehicle. With the wheel removed, you will remove the nut and bolt holding the upper control arm to the hub of the vehicle. You will now need to remove the bolt holding the rear strut to the trailing arm. The next step will be to remove the trunk's carpet and insulation in order to gain access to the rear shock's upper strut mounts. To begin this process, fold the main trunk carpet forward and take out the foam spare tire cover. Next, unclip the plastic panel that covers the trunk latch on the back side of the trunk. Remove the small panel that covers the back side of the taillight access. Unclip and remove the side carpet panel and you will now be able to access the nuts holding the rear upper strut mount. Remove these two nuts and the strut assembly will now be free from the vehicle and can be completely removed. Using spring compressors, secure the rear spring so that the rear shock piston nut can be removed safely. Like the front, once the nut is removed, you will reuse several pieces to mount onto the Raceline coilover. Once the rear upper mount is free from the shock, remove the OEM dust boot by simply pulling away from the mount. Once removed, you will need to slide the rubber insulator pad off the dust cover and place the insulator back onto the top mount. You will now install the strut mount to the Raceline coilover. The first piece to install prior to the actual mount will be the OEM lower washer. After this washer, you will slide the upper mount onto the shock followed by the OEM upper washer and then the new coilover piston nut. You will now tighten this nut down completely. Once tightened, slide the coilover into the wheel well while aligning the top mount studs into the body. Back in the trunk, you will reinstall the two nuts holding the top mount to the body. You will now reassemble the trunk carpet starting with the side panel. Slide the carpet into place, line up the clips, and clip into place. Align and reclip the back plastic panel into its spot on the back side of the trunk. Reinstall the small side panels by aligning and then pushing into place. Slide the foam spare tire cover in and then fold the trunk carpet back into place. You will now bolt the coilover to the trailing arm. Push up on the trailing arm, slide the bolt through, and tighten completely. Reinstall the nut and bolt holding the upper control arm to the hub of the vehicle. This may require lifting and pushing the hub towards the control arm. You can now install the rear wheel and this corner installation is now complete.